I start by making the base. I'm using materials I got from the Dollar Tree, a little cauldron, an LED candle. Price tag so far, $2. I'm using this candle because it has a little plastic lip around the bottom. That'll make it more secure in the cauldron. I thought it might just pop out of the housing, but I was wrong. So I needed to use the pliers to break off the plastic. Then I cut a hole in the bottom of the cauldron, just a bit smaller than that lip around the bottom of the candle, and it fit right in. Then I traced the mouth of the cauldron onto some plastic from some other packaging, something you just throw away, and cut it to fit just inside the top of the cauldron. I secure that in place with some hot glue. Now I already had this stuff, like the hot glue and the hot glue gun, but if you bought it new at the Dollar Tree, now the price tag would be $5. Now on to the sculpting. I start with a simple armature. Since it has no legs, the armature is really just to hold the arms in position. Because I'm making the proportions exaggerated, with a great big head and big hands, without an armature, the arms wouldn't be able to support the weight of the hands, and they just bend or fall off. I rough out the basic shape of the body. I want him to be skinny fat, with a little pot belly. So once I have the basic shape, I smooth it out and I start adding to some areas and taking away from some others. I also want the back and spine to be exaggerated and stick out, so I shape a ridge into the back that I'll refine and add detail to later. I cut into some areas and push the clay around to get the basic muscle groups. Because I'm using Sculpey 3 and it's softer than Super Sculpey, it's pretty easy to do this. But I'm not going for exacting anatomy here. This is more of a cartoonish piece, so just the basics. And by the way, the Super Sculpey blocks cost about $2 each, depending on where you get them. You can sometimes find them at Walmart or um, Michael's Art Supply or Joann Fabrics, those kind of places. They're usually between $2 and $3 a block for these little blocks. I used one. So that puts the price tag at about $4 or $7 if you had to buy the glue and the glue gun. Now on the back of the sculpt, I just mark where I want the vertebrae to be and then pull the clay away to make the skin look stretched. I add some detail to the shape of the vertebrae, then I brush over the entire back with 99% alcohol and a medium firm paintbrush. That smooths over the detail and subdues it and makes it look like it's covered in skin because I want the spine to look detailed, but I don't want it to look like it's bursting out of his back. Then I use a texture stamp to make the warty looking goblin skin. And now it's time to start sculpting the head. The body is done, so I bake that. But before I bake it, I stick a wooden skewer into the neck for the head to mount on. I take a foil ball and stick the other end of the wooden skewer into that. So there'll be an equal sized hole in the bottom of the head to fit right into the wooden skewer sticking out of the body. The foil and wooden skewers both came from the Dollar Tree, so add two more dollars to that price tag. The basic head shape is pretty simple. I put big marks where I want the eyes to go, I mark out the mouth, and then I build up the chin and smooth it out. I push the insides of the eye openings towards the nose. This helps shape the face a bit, so the nose blends in better when I add the nose and blend the edges down. Once the nose is on, I add the eyes. Now I use regular Super Sculpey for the eyeballs because it's firmer than the Sculpey 3. This lets me more easily shape the clay around the eyelids without having to worry about leaving too much of a dent or a mark on the eyeball itself, which I want to remain smooth. I start adding brows and eyelids. I smooth those out and then I start adding details with a dental pick. A dental pick is great for getting those fine lines. Then I shape out the ears and attach them to the head. By making the ears kind of chunky, it allows me extra material to smush down and blend the ear into the head. 
and that creates a look of skin that's kind of stretched from the ear. I pre-bake the teeth so that they're already hard when I go to add them to the sculpt. I'm sorry there's not more footage of this, but unfortunately I managed to perform most of this process just out of frame. I have two cameras recording what I'm doing, and I managed to be out of frame of both of them while I put the teeth in. But I did eventually manage to get back into frame. You may notice I'm using the texture stamp to hold the head. This is a simple way to hold the clay without leaving fingerprints. It's especially useful if you have to put pressure on the clay like you do when you're pushing the teeth in or when you're blending it off. This is very soft clay and if I just held it with my hands, I'd leave fingerprints all over the back. I blend in the mouth around the teeth and then it's done. I'm ready to bake the head. Then I start on the hands. I'm making this hand holding a back scrubber. So I just sculpt the hand wrapped around the scrubber or the toy plastic bone I'm using to make the handle of the scrubber. Once I have the hand shaped out, I sculpt the scrubber part, and then I attach it to the arm and blend it together. Once everything's sculpted and blended together, I'll go over it one last time with a texture stamp just so everything's blended in and then it's into the oven to bake. And as soon as it's all baked and cooled off, it's time to start painting. I start by basing it out in asphalt gray. Now this is almost black, it's a very dark gray, but the beauty of this is it creates a nice dark base coat, but you can still go over it with a black wash and create a little bit darker shade in the low points because it's not completely black. I use the same color on the cauldron and then stipple bronze over the top of that, just so it doesn't look so shiny and plastic anymore. And once that base coat's dry, I go over the top of that with a dark green. And then I paint in all the little details on the back scrubber. I paint the bone handle and the little leather straps holding on the scrubber. And then it's just a simple dry brush of a lighter moss colored green just to hit the high points and give all the shapes and the textures a little bit more definition by bringing out the high points. And then I paint his red goblin eyes. And once those are dry, I go over the whole thing with a black wash. And then paint the teeth. When all the paint's dry, I secure him into the cauldron with some hot glue. And then I add hot glue around him to create the effect of liquid. I'm also using some glow-in-the-dark hot glue that I picked up that looks pretty neat when it glows in the dark. Although as I noted in the um, community chat, uh, when it's not glowing in the dark it looked a little off. So I decided to paint over it with some neon green fluorescing paint. And here it is, all finished. The little goblin in a glowing green muck bath.
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do comment down below and smash that like button. Thanks for checking out my video.